Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Grand Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, Outlaws of Thunder Junction spoiler season is officially over for the main set. Uh, there's also, I believe, like the kind of like aftermath type set thing that they kind of like just jumbled into this as well, like vault from the vault or something. I don't know. Anyways, and then also there's the Commander Precons we spoiled too, but uh, we've got 43 commanders in the main set, so. Yeah, it's time to do a tier list to <laughs> compare these commanders and see what comes out on top. So again, we're going to get the S tier commanders, go all the way down to the D tier commanders, the worst commanders for the set, the best commanders of the set. Let's talk about them. Again, this is all my opinion, so uh, comment below on how wrong or how right I am. Let's jump into it. So again, with these tiers, these tiers are off the cuff, essentially. Like, I didn't actually make, like, a separate, you know, tier list that I just have, like, over here, like, looking at me like, oh, yes, that is S. Oh, yes, that is A. Seems like people seem to like when I just do these off the cuff and kind of explain my logic as I'm going through the card. I have looked at every single one of these cards, yes, throughout spoiler season, so I do have some knowledge on the card. That being said, I'm placing these tiers right now. So yeah, comment below what I'm very wrong. <laughs> and I reserve the right to change things as I go. I have in the past been like, hmm, maybe that shouldn't be a B compared to all these other E's now. A. So here we go. Let's go. Tiny Bones, the pick pocket that's right tiny bones is back oh and by the way these are like in i believe just whatever order uh mana value wise thanks scryfall not scryfall uh i guess foxfield is the one that is uh you know putting these in order anyways tiny bones back to it a 1-1 skeleton rogue death touch for a single black mana when it deals counter to a player you may cast target non-land permanent card from that player's graveyard and mana of any time they send to cast that spell um it's not the worst commander overall let's just say that it's kind of like um like Gonti esque but like harder to make use out of because again Gonti is like off the top library you're always going to hit and it's on etb there are some ways to use and abuse at etb in mono black like feign death type effects a couple of blink effects but not really this one though is like okay you need to first of all get things in your opponent's graveyards which you can do by either milling or again them just having things getting taken out or whatnot and also you need to get tiny bones through it does not technically have evasion but it's got like a don't block me kind of thing like with death touch so you need to be able to get it through you also have to actually pay for the things that you are stealing essentially right and it has to be i believe right then and there right you may cast target nominate permanent card from that player's graveyard so it has to be right then and there you can double that up that effect up with like a death touch not death touch double strike type effect essentially uh overall not the worst commander from the set in my opinion but definitely nowhere near the best i'm gonna throw this one in the c tier to start and again i reserve the right to change that in case i'm like oh wait actually tiny bones is in the worst tier moving on bristly bill definitely not in the worst tier uh here we go a 2-2 plant druid for two mana in green whenever a land is battlefield under your control put a counter on target creature Pay three green green, double the number of counters on each creature control, and I sometimes apologize. Shorthand, plus one, plus one. Okay, counters are only plus one, plus one when I talk about this commander. Um, the only limiting factor of this one really is that you're in mono green. That's basically it. There are plenty of infinite combos with this, essentially. Uh, crystalline, uh, there's like a hedron thingy that, you know, what, a crawler. Crystalline crawler? Like that one? Uh, Devoted Druid. I think Eddie pointed that one out. Anyways, Devoted Druid. Other things as well. Uh, even if you're not going in for it, that's still incredibly powerful. Just being like, hmm, yes, uh, I'm in green, so I can ramp very easily, very effectively, and you can't touch my lands. Uh, and also, I'm just going to say, hey, get counters on these things. Oh, great. Pay five mana. Double that. Oh, wait, no, I'm in green. I have ten mana. Double it again. Yay. Uh, yeah, very, very powerful. There's only one thing that is stopping this part from being an S tier, and that is that I know that uh, coming up there's at least one S tier card that is above it. So let's throw in the A tier for now. And again, I reserve the right to change that. Next up, Doc Arlock. Orlock? Grizzled Genius. Uh, funny name. Lovely. Beautiful art. 2-3 Bear Druid for 2 mana in Simic. Spells you cast from your graveyard or from Exile cost 2 less to cast. Plotting cards to your hand cost 2 less. This is a very... I, I love the design of this card. I really do. Um cost reduction is a very very powerful thing it is limited on what you're getting reduced if it was like anywhere outside your hand that might bump it up a little higher because that would also count well i mean i guess this is your commander so it wouldn't count itself but uh yeah i guess if you could clone it like spark double then it would there you go but uh when it comes to like cast out the top of your library like future sight type effects essentially yeah that would be very 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 powerful it's still very powerful again from like flashback or jumpstart type effects out of your graveyard 
Uh, there's other type like Aftermath too, I guess, as well. And then casting from Exile too. There's not too many like impulse draw type effects, but yeah, I mean, plotting obviously something you can cast from Exile as well as well as foretelling. Not really, I guess, because you're like, yeah, you're not ca you're not paying for those again. Anyways, this is one where actually, yeah, you are with foretell. Yeah, you, you get it out there and then you would reduce the cost. So yes, that would. So this one can save you a good amount of mana throughout the game. It is limited to Simic, uh, <laughs> limited to Simic, two of the most powerful colors. But uh, but yes, when it comes to like being able to cast other cells from Exile, like yeah, there's other colors that give you more access to that. Essentially, like red would help you out a lot with that. That being said, it's a pretty powerful effect. It's not overly powerful. I'd say it's more middle of the road compared to these commanders. So I'm gonna throw that in the B tier. Next up. Magda the Horde Master, a 2 2 Dwarf Berserker, because that's the thing. That costs two mana in red. Whenever you commit a crime, create tap treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. That is the saving grace on this card. I know I complain a lot sometimes about, you know, ability triggers only once, but when it comes to treasure effects, yeah, let's limit those. Uh, and coming to play tap two is limiting as well. So yeah, if you've got a bunch of like trigger or triggering, a bunch of targeting effects, like repeatable ones, like just say like a couple of Tims or something like that and play like tap one damage, cool. Committing crimes left and right is going to be pretty easy. The trip on the table, if you're set up properly, you can make four treasures, which is nice, but not overly overpowered, right? Sacrificing three treasures to make a four, four dragon with flying only at sorcery speed. So again, you can't like, oh no, someone's like casting a vandal blast on you know their turn. Oh no, I will sacrifice all my treasures for, oh no, I can't do that. You can sacrifice them for mana still. But you can't sacrifice them to make an army essentially out of nowhere with that or like set yourself up before your turn starts. That being said, even on your turn, you're like, oh, okay, I'll just do this because they have haste too. So yeah, I mean, I'd say it's more of a middle of the road commander is limited to just red. If it had other colors, it'd probably be a bit better. But yeah, middle of the road, let's say B tier for now. Moving on, Malcolm the Eyes. Look, look with your special eyes. My brand! Anyone commercial now? Okay. Uh, 2 2 Siren Pirate Flying in Haste that costs is it colors. Whenever you cast your second spell, you turn, investigate. So this is kind of like a better but worse Jory N in a way. Jory N is like, hey, casting your second spell on a turn, you just draw a card. So it's better in that, hey, I don't have to pay two extra mana to draw a card by sacrificing that clue. It's, uh, it's all right. It, it's worse than Jorian in that. It is better than Jorian in that there's other things that you can do with clues. Essentially, you can, again, like, say, like, oh, these cards are, like, the number of artifacts you control. Great. That counts, obviously. Or, like, tap two artifacts, like a Shimmer Dragon kind of thing. Like, draw a card. Like, or, yeah, th there's other ways. Like, or improvise kind of things, too. There's other ways you can take advantage of clues. Also, like, clue tribal type effects as well. So, it's interesting in that. That being said, again, like it comes to like just strictly card advantage, you're at a disadvantage compared to Jorian when it comes to like having to invest more mana to actually draw those cards. Oh, goodness. I mean, I'd say this one, and maybe I am underselling it a little bit, but I'm saying this one isn't quite as powerful as the previous two commanders I just talked about. So I'm actually going to throw this in the C to Tiny Bones, and hopefully Tiny Bones isn't alone on its own. Next up. Okay, never mind. Here we go. We're fine. <laughs> Miriam heard Whisper, a 3 2 Human Druid for two mana in Selesnia. As long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have hex group. Whenever a mount or vehicle control attacks, get a counter on it. Um, I don't think we really saw enough like overpowered mount effects, essentially, especially ones that could just fit into just Selesnia. I mean, the most powerful mount effect is probably like later on we'll talk about that. Or not mount effect, saddle effect, but you know, mount. You know what I mean? Uh one of the commanders that has it that doesn't fit in these colors. It comes to like just a vehicle deck. There's a lot better vehicle commanders out there. Like having Hexproof on your turn is nice because you're like, especially with vehicles, because if your bonds have like swords to plowshares, they can never take out your vehicles essentially. Because again, if you only make them into creatures on your turn, the only creatures on your turn and they have Hexproof that. That being said, on your opponent's turns, I mean your your mount your mounts. Yeah, your mounts are essentially always just available to be taken out because they're always going to be creatures. Uh, not that they couldn't take out the other ones. You know what I mean. But also, yeah, just limiting just the Hexproof to your turn is a big downside to this. Like, getting an extra counter on your things is nice. You don't have ways to really use and abuse that, really, with, like, extra combats. You're not in those colors. It's an okay commander, I guess. Like, is it the very worst? Ugh. I mean, I do think it is worse than the other two commanders we have talked about so far. Yeah, I think overall it just doesn't do enough for you when it comes to vehicles. Like, if it, if it gave you Hexproof on every turn, that'd be much more powerful obviously for your vehicles and stuff like that ah okay i'm gonna throw it in the d tier for now but i reserve the right to move it okay it might bump up to c it's kind of like a d plus c minus kind of we'll see so Tara the infiltrator a two three human ninja rogue with menace that costs two mana in uh Demir. 
Whenever it and or one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield of control, if none of them were cast or no man was spent to cast them, draw a card. So anything that kind of cheat your commanders into play, commanders, creatures into play, uh, again, non-tokens, so it's obviously not counting tokens, which would be busted. Um, yeah, blink effects obviously work uh, into the battlefield. If, it, if Oh, wait, no. If none of them were cast, so yeah, not cast. It doesn't count, like, all the things at once. If you, like, if you mass blink things, essentially, or, like, mass reanimate, it wouldn't count all that. That being said, there's a good amount of things that you can actually utilize to cheat things into play, or, I mean, I think Ninjutsu works with this as well. So it has a decent amount of card advantage kind of built in. Yeah, I mean, I'd say this is pretty good. I'm not going to say it's near the top, though, I don't think. Uh, it can give you good card advantage, though. I throw this in the B tier for now. Moving on. Taiwakin, perfect shot. A 2-3 human mercenary for two minute in Boros. Whenever a source you, when a source you control deals non company into a creature, eagle like creature's toughness, draw a card. X and tap of a source you control with deal non company into a permanent player. This turn deals that much damage plus X instead. So this is, I, I love the design of this card. This is like, instead of like, um, how we'd previously had gotten like with one of the Theros gods, or no, Kaldheim gods, like um, like trampling. Like you want to trample over. Uh, there was the giant or whatever it was. You want to like spell trample over creatures, like deal excess damage. This is like, no, no, no. You want Xaxes, which I think is very spicy. So having like a variety of damage based, like board wipes essentially, like at different levels, like one damage, two damage, three damage, or just like X spell ones. And then also maybe ways to give your opponent certain kinds of creatures, like certain size creatures can really help too. Also, it doesn't count like, it doesn't say like in a creature to opponent controls, which is interesting because you could just build your deck to be like, okay, I might make a bunch of one ones and then I ping all the one ones to take them out and just draw that many cards, which would be quite good. You can also utilize to say finisher to be like, oh, I dealt one damage to an opponent with a non, uh, with a source, uh, non-combat source essentially. Uh, let me just dump a bunch of mana and change that into 10 damage or whatever it needs to be. Also damage building effects can help with that too. It's interesting. It's a very interesting commander. Good amount of card advantage and also potential finisher type uh, as well. Our limited Boros colors, which some may say are the weakest among all the colors out there when it comes to color combinations, but still, again, does what it needs to do for this kind of a commander. I'd say overall, you are probably like a, yeah, probably a B tier commander. I'm going to go B tier. Next up, Vadmir New Blood. Okay, there we go. Now I don't feel so bad about uh, the D tier. A 2-2 two -two Vampire Rogue for two mana. Whenever you can make crime, get a counter on it. This ability triggers only once each turn. If it triggered more than once each turn, it'd be a lot better. It definitely wouldn't be D tier, but it's D tier. Spoiler alert. As long as it's got four or more counters on it, as a Menace Lifelink. Cool. So it's like um, very complex Voltron. <laughs> Not complex Voltron, but like commit crime once a turn Voltron. And then if it's ever dealt with, you're like, oh no, I need to start over. All right, get it back out. Let's commit crimes on each turn. Not that you can't, like, equip it as well. And, like, Menace Life Link are nice, but, like, I mean, this could definitely be. If it was, like, if one of those was, like, indestructible or hexproof, it wouldn't be in the D tier, but it's in the D tier. And, obviously, if it didn't have that limitation once each turn, it's it's not a D tier card either. Maybe maybe the mount one moves up now because of that. Yeah, let's move the mount one up. Okay, again, vehicles. Yeah, it's just, it, it, this one's just strictly worse. Here we go, another worse one. Uh, Vile Smasher Gleeful Gren Grenadier. Grenadier? I don't know how to say that. Let me know in the comments below. How do you say that? 3-2 God Mercenary for 2 mana in Rakdos. Whenever another outlaw enters the battlefield, control Vile, Vile Smasher, Gleeful Grenadier deals 1 damage target opponent. Uh, this is pretty limited, I would say. I mean, I think, like, this could have been definitely better in a lot of different ways. It could have been, like, kind of like old Vile Smasher, but, like, damage to a random opponent, but it's, like, 3 damage instead of just 1. Like, 1 is super low. Like, 1 is super low. Or, like, again, like, 1 damage to each opponent, like a Zolport Cutthroat type. This is, like, just strictly worse. So, again, I think this also is kind of just on that much, much worse uh, D tier. And, again, it's, like, not, like, any creature. Again, because the limitation's already there, right? It's specifically Assassins, Mercenaries, Pirates, Rogues, Warlocks. Technically Changelings, too, right? But, yeah, it's just for Outlaws, so... It's pretty limited in what it does. Uh, I mean, yeah, you've got, like, mass reanimation type effects, so you can, like, really take advantage of that, maybe, to get things out of your graveyard. Like, ha-ha, I deal... How many creatures do I get on play? Five. I deal five damage to you! Ha-ha! Or, like, feign death type effects, but still... Or, like, copy effects. Yeah, you don't really have, again, like, mass blink easy to, like, just, like, oh, bounce all my outlaws to come back into play. Cool. Uh, yeah, overall, I think it's pretty weak. D tier. Next up, Breaches the Blastmaster, a 3-3 Goblin Pirate for 3 mana, and is it Menace? Whenever you cast your second spell, each turn you may sacrifice an artifact. If you do flip a coin, when you win the flip, copy that spell, choose Arcus for the copy. When you lose the flip, Breaches the Blastmaster deals damage equal to that spell's made value to any target. 
I mean, it's randomness uh, makes it worse, obviously, because you can't, like, you get a benefit either way, right? You are getting a benefit either way. Like, dealing damage with spells made of value to any target, that is nice. Again, any target making it so you can take out creatures with it, you can take out opponents' faces, but also just doubling things up is lovely too. But there's definitely going to be times where you're like, I want this one or that one, and you get the other one. And yeah, I think because of that there's a limiting factor to it, which is nice that it's a limiting factor, but still, like, I, I think I said this in the episode when I reviewed it. I much would rather have it be like, a fail versus and, and like a really good succeed like it could have been like hey if you win the flip copy it and also deal damage equal to its mana value and if you fail a flip nothing happens you just you just fail the flip because this is kind of like not really failing the flip um like you're just you're you're getting an extra benefit wizards starting to do that more often where it's like they don't like when people just some people just don't like when they whiff and it's like that kind of that's kind of fun of flip cards or like flip coins in my opinion like you know you can whiff this you can't uh yeah i think overall i do think it is a d tier commander not d sorry c tier commander it is definitely not as bad as bad mirror or um goodness already forgot vile smasher sorry vile smasher yeah I, i'd say this is a c tier commander next up fibble flip lost on the range poor fibble flip just can't find his way ever uh a one one homunculus for uh three mana in blue ward two you may look at the top card of your library anytime the top card of your library is plot the plot cost equal to its mana cost you may plot non-line cards to the top of your library and this is kind of like a i mean it's just a one one it does have ward two so it's got some protection there but like anything can take this out just like okay i um gosh what's that like little like one damage like to every one of your opponent's creatures like the spark one or whatever it is like just oh, okay cool yeah i hit oh i accidentally hit fibble flip sorry your commander's gone my bad <laughs> so um yeah i mean because it's like so weak that does take it down quite a bit but like the future site type potential of being able to play off the top of your library and like plot off the top of your library is so cool so being able to get cards off the top of your library is great Obviously, if you build in like self milling effects too, you can be like, oh, that's a card I don't want on top of my library. Mill that away. Be able to plot easier off the top of my library, something else probably. So, yeah, this can provide you a good amount of card advantage with like a lot of card advantage throughout the game. And again, a good amount of like flexibility in how you utilize that would be plotting. So, yeah, being able to look at the top of your library, very valuable. Being able to plot the top of your library top your library even more valuable i'd say overall probably a c sorry not c b to your commander i keep messing that but i don't know why i keep saying the wrong one b because s is the top and i haven't put anything in s yet which we'll get to that shortly i'm sure fortune loyal steed a 2-4 beast mount for three mana in white enters battlefield scry one when it attacks while saddled at the end of combat exile up to one creature that's saddled this turn they return those cards to battlefield under their own control saddle one this would be, I mean, I would consider it, I guess, for middle of the road if it wasn't, like, throwing itself into danger every single time you actually want to get this effect because it needs to get to the end of combat. Um, yeah, for you really to take advantage of this again and again and again. And you're just sending it into danger each time. And it's got four toughness, which is all right. But, like, you're going to need something else either to, like, get it through with some evasion or just more and more and more toughness. Uh, ET being scrying too each time it does, like, go away and come back is nice. And also being the big thing here is like being able to use and abuse other ETBs. That being said, again, you are in what is still considered by many out there the weakest color in Commander. And when it comes to a mono color deck, um, yeah, I, I'd say Fortune Loyal Steed. I'm gonna throw you in the. I mean, you're again, you're like you're like a C minus, I'd say. But yeah, I'll throw you in C. I'm gonna throw you in C. Okay, you're like right there. There's a lot of like C minuses, I think. Maybe they're all just see. Anyways, next up, draw the Flesh Rite. A 2-3 human warlock for three mana in blue. Whenever you cast a spell during your turn other than the first spell, that turn create 2-2 two -two blue and black zombie rogue creature token. Whenever a zombie enters battlefield under control, put a counter in for each other uh, zombie that enters battlefield under control this turn. I think there's a couple things holding this card back. Like, it's a really cool design, and I do like it. Um, a couple things holding this card back from being more powerful, at least seen as more powerful. Um, it, it would be an A tier, I think, without... If it wasn't limited to just your turn, again, whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than the first, again, you have to essentially just dedicate all your resources to being like playing at sorcery speed, basically. And be like, okay, I'm just going to cast everything on my turn and hope it all works out. Versus being able to, again, you're in blue, blue decks like this, like tall rand are all like, not all, but mostly like instants because you're like, oh yeah, before my turn, uh, yeah, I've got like 10 mana, dump that all into spells to cast to make drakes. This one, it's like, no, 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 no. On my turn, I need to dump all my resources hope I stick around for another turn or hope my you know, board sticks around for another turn. If not, I just wasted a bunch. And yeah, there is a benefit to like your zombies can become absolutely massive. Again, if you're casting more and more spells in a turn, you're getting a lot of zombies out and they all get huge. You also don't have access to blue though, which helps with most of these zombie tribals, essentially uh, type effects. And also like the best zombies out there are typically in black. So you don't have access to that. It's a monocolor commander. Blue is nice, but still like 
you'd like that black for zombie tribal. And again, because of that like on your turn limitation, like I'd say that this it could have been definitely an A tier commander, maybe even S. Like if it was, well, I, I'd say for, yeah, probably A compared to what we've got. But it's gonna be a B tier commander for me just because of those two limitations. Next up, and here we go. This is my S tier commander, and I don't know if there's any other ones. I mean, we'll, we'll get to the other ones here in a bit, but that actually meet up with this one up in the S tier because maybe there's one. It's pretty crazy. Uh, a 3-3 Human Shaman for a 3 mana Naya color is Haste. Non-token creatures you control have tap, create tokens, copy of target token. You control the edge of the battlefield this turn. This is a busted commander. This really is. This is, uh, you know, like I, I said, they put limitations on a lot of the other ones. They didn't put any limitations on this one, essentially. And this one, essentially, it's like, okay, it gives you a lot of a combo, essentially. And also... Even if you're not comboing with this, the value is just absurd. Let's say you've got like five creatures in play and you make one treasure. You can be like, hmm, yeah, I'd like five treasures. Tap them all, make five treasures. Again, you're going to have a lot of untap effects, like, you know, vitalize the center. It's like, oh, okay, untap my team for one mana. Cool. Hmm, do I want to tap them again? Sure, I'll make five more treasures. Why not? Again, it doesn't limit. Again, I talked about limitations with previous cards. This one has no limitations, except for like that you're, luckily your token creatures can't tap and do this. Otherwise that'd be very easily infinite. That being said, um, again, a copy of target token, you control into battle this turn. It does not say like non-creature token or creature token. If it limited to one of those two, it'd be a lot, it's, it'd still be very, very good and very, very powerful, but be a lot less powerful than what it is having absolutely no limitation again you can literally just be like well i don't really have a good creature token that about for this turn but like i can make a treasure with this and you're getting so many ways to make treasures these days oh okay cool yeah just tap my army make a ton of treasures uh i can do this instant speed as well by the way and then untap them all with other things and then do that and that i mean i guess what's that one um gosh extra combat effect that's on an enchantment you're paying three red red whatever that one is again essentially where you're just like yeah that, that goes infinite with the treasure generation essentially you can do that uh very easily again with any kind of a bill village village bell ringer type effect which there are a couple that like untap your entire team you have one of those coming to play uh that you and you've got ways to make token copies like twin flame essentially like you're luckily not in blue so you can't like get all the ways to make token copies of creatures but you've got plenty of ways to make token copies of creatures believe me again heat shimmer twin flame type effects like oh okay i make a to token copy of my village bell ringer or basically anything even just attacks one creature and then all of a sudden uh i have infinite of that creature and if you have things that again like village bell ringer that untaps all your team oh, okay cool i have infinite village bell ringers oh by the way i also made a treasure this turn so i have infinite treasures infinite mana oh by the way or just like you have like one man can play you'd also get infinite mana you have one Tim and Tim and play infinite damage. You just have an impact Trevor's in play. You win or a certain surge in play. You win any kind of a draw effect. You just draw your entire library. Yeah. It's a very, very simple commander to pilot or not to pilot, but a simple commander to build around because a lot of things are broken with it. Basically make token copies of creatures, untap effects of creatures on ETB. That's all you need. Add treasures in for flavor and function. <laughs> And uh, you win. So yeah, I'd say this one is pretty broken. Again, it's very low to the ground too. And again, this can actually just be part of the combo again itself because this is a hasty creature that also has this ability to tap, make a tone copy. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw you up in the S tier. I do think that you are the most powerful commander we've talked about so far. Maybe even the most powerful commander in the entire set. Next up, Honest Rutstein, a 3-2 human warlock for three men and Golgari. Enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Creature spells you cast, cost wants to cast. The first part is nice, not really all that needed for, like, it's not what makes this commander go. If that was just the first part, it'd be like, this is a terrible commander. My goodness, that is awful. Uh, but with that second part, actually, cost reduction is huge. And, uh, yeah, reducing creature spells from your hand is great, especially if you were to build around this in a certain way where maybe... You're kind of building it so that you can actually have creatures that basically cost nothing. I mean, you could actually partner this one if you really want to with uh, Amori and then have your creature spells cost two less too. So you can go in that direction. But yeah, if you're doing just like artifact creatures at one, cool. All your artifact creatures in your hand are free now. And you can use and abuse that by being like, oh, okay, cool. I'll get like a Viserys here out, a free sacrifice outlet to then have like a fecundity out or like other kind of drawing effects like boulder vine reclamations at the other one too. Like just have those kinds of things out. It was like, like aristocrat style effects where you're like, okay, I sacrifice my free creature that I just played out of my hand for free. Uh, I draw two cards, whatever. Oh, I get this other trigger. Zulpor cutthroat drain you a little bit. Oh, okay. Did this all this. Oh, okay. Now I, I sacrifice all the creatures and then I uh, reanimate them all or like bring them all back to my hand with, um, 
Oh gosh, what's the green spell that's flashback that can bring all the one kind of permanent back to your hand? Oh, okay. Re Renaissance. Something Renaissance. Creeping Renaissance. There we go. We got there. That, or like the ones that just put them back on top of the library so you can draw back into them again. Like, there's so many ways to do so many just crazy things with this. It does require setup, though. So I will say that. There's the limiting factor on this. It does require setup. So, yeah, I guess we're getting a lot of commanders in the B tier, though. But, like, again, don't sleep on some of these uncommon commanders because, like, that is very, very good. You can sleep on this next one, though. Jolene, Plundering Pugilist. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I moved that mount one up uh, and uh, vehicle one up because this is definitely not up to that either. A 4-2 Mercenary for three mana in, uh, I was going to say Golgari and Gruul. Whenever you attack with one more creature's power, four greater, create a treasure token. One or more. That's key right there. Uh, and also it says attack, so like that is just on your turn. So this is just on your turn because you can't attack an opponent's turn, obviously. And also it is one or more, so you get one treasure. I mean, I'm glad they're limiting treasure things with this, I guess. But again, a good commander, this is not. Uh, also, you can sacrifice treasure to deal one damage to targets. Woohoo. Uh, no, this is pretty awful. Definitely a terrible commander, in my opinion. D tier. This is like a D minus, I think, actually. It makes the other D tier commanders look much better. <laughs> so, D minus. Next up, Karavek the Punisher, a 3 3 human warlock for three mana. Whenever you commit a crime, exile to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. If you do, you lose two life. Uh, this is one where you can kind of chain spell for spell for spell, like targeting, like, you know, ones that just target either your opponents, any of their creatures or anything they control, I guess, or like their graveyards. So being able to be like, oh, okay, cool. I copy my removal spell in my graveyard, which targets that. Okay, cool. I commit another crime. Yeah, I'll pay two life. Do that again and again and again. Good amount of value. I mean, there's a limiting factor to it, obviously, is that... Again, you are exiling out of your graveyard, so, like, they're gonna go away. You don't have really ways to get them back, essentially, so you have a limiting factor that. You can obviously, like, mill yourself to get more and more and more options. You are limited by mana, too. You do have some ways to ramp this as well. I'd say, overall, this is below the middle of the pack, so let's throw this in the C. Oh, nope, C tier. How dare you, Karavek, trying to jump up to the B tier. Bad Karavek. Moving on! Kimball, Profiteering Mayor, a 2-4 human advisor for 3 mana in Orzov. Whenever one of our tokens enter the battlefield under your opponent's control, for each of them, create a tap token that's a copy of it. This ability triggers only once each turn. Whenever one of our tokens enter the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Okay, so this one to me... Ugh, okay, I think just because of the pre prevalence of treasures, essentially, the prevalence of making tokens, and also the fact that you can just utilize some things potentially to give your opponents tokens that you get them too, this to me again just literally because of the prevalence of treasures in my opinion is how disgusting treasures are is probably an a tier commander and maybe i'm overselling this one a little bit but yeah it's kind of like half of like mirkwood bats obviously when it comes to like okay that's already a very powerful card right that i mean that counts when you're making or sacrificing tokens this is just when you make tokens but there's no limiting factor to that right it's not like this triggers only once you turn the first part trigger only once you turn that's needed uh but yeah i mean and you also, again, if someone just makes, like, if someone secure the weights, it makes 10 tokens. Because, again, it says one or more. For each of them, create tap tokens, copy of it. You're getting the same number that they're getting. So, again, if they just massive make a ton of tokens, you also massive get to make a ton of tokens. But more than likely, it's going to be like, oh, okay, uh, that player's got a smothering tithe out. Now, I basically have a smothering tithe out. I get a token. Whenever they get a treasure, I get a treasure. I mean, with limiting factor on it, too. But but still, just free value for you, plus draining your opponents again. Obviously, you're going to have ways to make tokens on your own, too. Yeah, that's a very, 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 very powerful commander. Not quite up to the speed, though, of the number one commander that I've talked about so far with Geared, though, in my opinion. Kellen the Kid, a 3-3. Flying, lifelinking, human fairy rogue for three mana in Bant. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast a permanent spell with equal or lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand on the battlefield. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate they said permanent spell because then I'd be like, ha ha, inevitable betrayal. Those kind of spells. Um, it is interesting. Okay, again, like you get, if you plot things, if you're casting spells from your graveyard, again, anywhere in your hand, cast to the top of the library, you get things out of your hand for free. You do it, they have to be things that are, that cost less. I mean, it's good value. They're not quite toward the top, though. I do think we have like a middle heavy, essentially, set, it seems like so far, at least to me. I'd say that this one, again, is a B tier commander. And maybe that's because I think some people would probably put the S and the A's that I have so far, like all in the same tier. Like they probably bump those up to the S's and then like the B would move up and shift. Like there were some A's from that. 
I just do think that gear is just on a different level, though, and I really want to make sure that that is pointed out, in my opinion. All right. And again, if you disagree, that's completely fine. Comment below with how you disagree. Next up, Laughing Jasper Flint, a 4-3 Lizard Rogue that costs three mana in, I was going to say Golgari. Goodness gracious. Rakdos, here we go. Creatures you control but don't own are mercenaries as to their types. Beginning of your upkeep, exile the top X card target opponent's library. X the number of outlaws you control. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from one of those spells and spend mana of any type of any type to cast those spells basically like steal things all the top opponents libraries to then steal more things off the top opponents libraries if, if it's creature based obviously um again that the like upkeep makes it so that if that was like the beginning of combat that would be more effective because more effective and less it'd be less effective because you're not like planning ahead further but like more effective in that like threatened type effects would work because threatened effects again like gain control of until end of turn you would also add to your number for that x but since it's like a temporary effect, that wouldn't help because you wouldn't have that creature until your next upkeep. That being said, like permanently sealing things is good. And getting more and more things on top punts libraries, the more and more value you get out of that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be boring, but I'm just going to say in the B tier as well. I do think it's good value of the top punts libraries gives you a good amount of benefit from that. Next up. Lazav, Familiar Stranger, a 1-4 Shapeshifter for 3 mana in Demir. Whenever you commit a crime, put a counter on it. Then you may exile a card from your graveyard. If a creature card is exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy of the card until I've turned. Village triggers only once each turn. I mean, being so limited to just, um, yeah, basically only on your turn. Like, you can have Lazav become a copy of it on your turn. I mean, like, or until end of turn, right? Copy until end of turn. Yeah, so basically... Cool. Yeah, you can do some pretty cool things with that, but also turning Lazav into like a better creature. You're like, yay! Oh, that thing's gone permanently now. Hope I get a lot of value out of this right now. Uh oh, Lazav got taken out. Okay, well I just I lost that. Uh, okay, get Lazav back out. Do it again. Cool, that worked out that time. Oh, but I, but now it's gone. And uh, yeah, I gotta keep getting more things. Like yeah, you can self mill. Obviously, there's ways to get things in your graveyard. I totally agree with that. But like compared to well, previous Lazabs, this is pretty terrible compared to some of the other commanders in this set this is just pretty lackluster not the worst but uh definitely a c tier commander in my mind except lila undefeated slick shot a 3-3 human rogue for three mana in is it prowess whenever you cast a multicolored instant short spell from your hand exile that spell instead of resolving instead of putting it in your graveyard sorry as it resolves it still resolves if you do it becomes plot so basically like free plotting like it's kind of like copying a spell but like saving the copy which is very good uh it is limited though to just multicolor instant sorceries which does definitely tamper this down a little bit like if this was not limited if this is just like any insert sorcery my gosh s tier because hey um yeah i cast my uh time warp and i get an extra turn oh i get to plot that and get an extra turn again it turns like any of them into like double extra turn effects which is just crazy good so yeah, I think this one, in my opinion, is uh, probably middle of the road. Just because of that limitation, it is it is a very good commander. That being said, because again, it is limited to multicolor instance of sorceries, which again is more limiting than you might think. Uh, again, you are in is it like if you were is a five color commander, then yeah, you'd be like, oh okay, I can find a lot of things to do with it. You're in is it. There's still very good things to do with it, but it is more limited than you might think. Okay. Next up, we've got Marchesa, Dealer of Death, a 3-4 Human Rogue for 3 mana in Grixis. Whenever you commit a crime, you may pay 1. If you do the top 2 cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, the other in your graveyard. I mean, this one, unlike many, if not, I mean, there, I think there's probably one or two other ones, but like, this one, unlike many of the other, the vast majority of these committing crime type effects, it doesn't get limited to, this triggers only once each turn. Thank goodness. Yeah, I got a bone to pick with wizards about that. Um, so yeah, essentially being able to commit more than one crime in a turn and benefiting from that, that's great. There's some crazy things that you can do with this. The limiting factor on this one is you have to pay one in order to actually get that effect, which is still a very good effect though. Look at the top two cards of your library. One goes in your hand, it goes in your graveyard. It's a very, very good effect. Again, especially if you have repeatable ways in ways that can benefit off of this, like ways to be like, oh, okay, something hit my graveyard. I get this effect like that can target potentially. Yeah, being able to do something like that or like, yeah, being able to discard cards in your hand for certain types of effects to commit crimes. There are those kinds of cards out there. And by doing that, like a seismic assault type card, like if you went and got a land, uh, those top two cards, put in your hand, discard, commit another crime, target an opponent's face, target one of their creatures, whatever it is. So that's an example. 
So being able to repeat commit crimes, still have to pay mana to basically get that effect again and again and again. That being said, a very powerful effect, being able to get cards in your graveyard and un more, more like in your hand though, obviously is what I mean. But like getting cards in your graveyard can still be very powerful too. Obviously if there's cards that you can utilize again, like flashback, etc., or just having a glut of cards in your graveyard for like, hey, graveyard shenanigans. Um, overall, yeah, because it is repeatable, because that is repeatable and there are certain combinations that can be absolutely crazy with this, I do think it is a step above the vast majority of the B tier, actually. So I will throw this. It's kind of like, again, probably an A minus B plus, and maybe I'm just bumping it up because the B tier is just uh, quite large right now. But I think just like looking at the different commanders I see in there, I do think Marchesa has a higher ceiling than the vast majority of those out there and three really good colors when it comes to committing crimes too. Next up, Riku of Many Paths. It's a very good commander. A 3-3 human wizard for a 3 mana in teamer. Whenever you cast a modal spell, choose up to X Rex the number of times you or a number of times you chose a mode for that spell. 3-3, three, three, exile the top card of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play it, put a plus counter on Riku of many paths. It gains trample to have turn. Create a 1-1 one, one blue creature token with flying. It's kind of like Aragorn. Um the like casting multicolor ones and getting like free extra value. This is basically just hey, play a lot of modal spells. That have a lot of, not just in this, you can still do it. You can still do like, sure, like a charm spell, which makes you pick only one. Typically with the typical charms, you know what I mean? Like basically Boros charm, those kind of things. You're picking like, no, you couldn't use Boros in this, but you know what I mean? Civic charm, whatever it is. You could use those. It's like you choose one, but you're only getting one extra benefit out of that. It's still nice to get the extra benefit, but yeah, you want ones to like choose one or more or choose any number. And you're like, oh, okay, I pick three things. I get three free value off of this. Again, basically impulse draw until the next turn, which is lovely. And again, it does say play. So if it's land, you can play those. Making birds, that's nice. Being able to go wide with creatures. The counters on Riku are nice. Like there's some ways to take advantage of like getting a certain amount of power or, you know, like the greatest power creatures you control. And sure, you can like turn it into like, that's your win condition. You swing with Riku and trample over things. Cool. More likely you're going to be like, I'm going to go wide and take my opponents out with like a bird army. That being said, you can try to do both, really. Um, but uh, I'd say overall, like, just, again, the glut of... There's a decent amount of modal spells out there. Again, like, there is a limiting factor to, I guess, this one. And maybe I'm speaking on both sides of my mouth to this one, like in Lila. But the amount of value you get out of this just by casting a modal spell, it's like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. Like, I get three effects with that modal spell. Already three value from that. Plus three free value from this. Yeah, it's quite good. And, like, obviously, like, playing a modal spell can chain into another modal spell with that exiting up the top of your library. And there's ways to take advantage of those birds, too, that are coming into play as well. Like making them bigger, making them hit harder, maybe sacrificing them for mana or whatnot. Yeah, uh, there's definitely some crazy things you can do with this one. I'd say this one, again, is probably more like an A- minus. well, like Mar with Marchesa. It does make it tough, again, that I made that S tier. And I put myself in this position, and I'm sorry to myself, I guess. But <laughs> but yes, I think this is an A- minus commander. Uh, very, very, very effective. Next up, Vraska the Silencer. Okay. This one is really only dependent on what your opponents are playing. And if they're playing certain things, this is like S tier. Okay, this is like Miracle Lord of Bones, but like three mana instead of seven. I think I said the name right. Miracle, whatever that one is. You know what I mean. The uh, the one in uh, Abzan. 3-3 uh, three, three, Gorgon, Assassin, Death Touch for three mana in Golgari. Whenever a non-token creature in Poke Controls dies, you may pay one. If you do, turn that card to the battlefield. Tap it under control. It's a treasure. Thanks, Wizards of the Treasures. Cool. With Tap, Sacrifice is Artifact. Add one mana in color. It loses other card types. So it loses other card types, but doesn't lose abilities, which is the big thing. So, like, if your opponent has a Devoted Druid, congratulations, you win! <laughs> Basically. I mean, if you take it out, but... You're in colors that can take things up pretty easily. I mean, I think the most effective build path around this one is just having a bunch of edict effects like that, like make everyone sacrifice a creature. Maybe even you sure, like, because it's like very, very, very easy for you. Like, oh, okay, cool. I play a plague crafter. Oh no, I sacrifice my plague crafter. What do you all sacrifice? Oh, your giant creatures. Thank you. I'll take them as treasure. So you're like, you're at the very least getting mana out of this. I mean, you have to pay mana into it to get the effect. Yes, that's not free. And I guess that's the one limiting factor on this card. That being said, uh, yeah, you get whatever ETBs those things have. So, like, if they've got, like, a Mold Drifter, congratulations, you get two cards for paying one mana. Oh, and by the way, yeah, you, you, you get to keep it around as a treasure if you want to utilize that. You also can take advantage of them being treasures. Something like Marionette Master to be like, oh, I just drain you all for four for each one of these things I sacrifice. I sacrifice them for other things as well, like drawing cards, certain cards of, like, sacrifice, permanence, draw cards. Uh, also, again, if you just have activated abilities, those things, you just get those activated abilities. You get the ETBs. You get the death triggers. You get all those things. 
The only limitation is mana, really, with this. So, again, this is one that is, like, S tier if your opponents are playing the right things. Right beneath it, probably, if they're not. Like, if they're not playing, like, creatures with ETBs or activated abilities, like, their mana dorks just become, like, mana rocks for you. Uh, but, yeah, you are limited to that. And because you have to pay for it, I guess... This is probably like, again, like A plus, essentially. Am I really going to put this in the... Ah, I mean, this is kind of like an S tier, though. It's like right there. Okay. This is... Ah, uh, gosh. Just because it doesn't have like the crazy combo potential, I guess, of Garrett. I will throw it in the A tier. It's right up there, though. It's right up there. A plus tier. Let's throw that there. Wily Duke Etten Hero, a 4-2 Human Ranger for one. It's Lesnia Colors. Vigilance. Whenever it becomes tap, you game will life draw a card. I like the design of this one. So this one's like clever in that, okay, like you can't even just attack to actually have this tap, right? You can't because it's got vigilance. So you're like, okay, I attack. Oh, I don't get to gain life or draw a card. You are limited in that you have to actually build around this and be like, okay, I've got things like Glare of Subduel and play where like that I can tap my creatures or like, again, uh, mountain creatures. I wouldn't recommend, like it depends on how you want to build it. If you want the most powerful version of this, I wouldn't recommend like mountain creatures for the most part because those are easier to deal with. Vehicles stick around more often because again, they're not always creatures. First, like a Wrath of God can take the out the mountain creatures, the saddle creatures, but Wrath of God won't take out your vehicles unless you're turning them into creatures on your opponent's turns, which you probably shouldn't do most of the time. So being able to crew things, that can be another way to tap. There's plenty of ways to actually tap this creature. When you do so, getting one life, that's okay. Drawing a card is more important, obviously, but also you can like play around with that gain one life. You can have things like Trellosar in play, where you get extra benefits from doing so. There's even ways to be like, oh, I gained a life. Okay, pay one mana with like that one uh, Well of Lost Dreams or whatever it is. Draw another card. So yeah, once you're set up, you can do some crazy things with this. It does take some setup to get there, though. It's got some potential. It's got some legs. Uh, I will say B tier. Let's go with that. Next up, and my apologies, this one, for every reason, a Moxfield is not uh, to the English version yet. I'll do this for the best of my ability from memory. And let me know if I'm wrong on this, but I believe it's correct. 5-5. Five, five. Uh, Scorpion Dragon, I think? We're already off to a great start. For 4 mana in Rakdos, Flample. Uh, flying and Trample. And then it also has Sacrifice 3 other creatures. Basically, put a creature from your hand into play. Only Sorcery Speed, you can activate that. And only once uh, each turn, essentially. So, basically, you cheat out one creature from your hand. Um, I'd say like at the highest, highest build. Yeah, this is probably up there. And I, my apologies again that this is not uh, the English version. Uh, but I think this is probably in the S tier. Again, this is just one of those commanders that like, you ha also have access to tutors, obviously, since you're, you're in red. You've got access to plenty of ways to make a lot of creature fodder. And you've got ways to give the creatures haste that you're getting into play. So you're just like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Turn one, do this. Turn two, get creature fodder into play. Turn three, do, you know, get more whatever creature fodder into play. Something that can give haste essentially to the creature going to be coming into play. Turn four, get this out. Cheat out, Blight Seal Colossus, swing, take that player out. Like just, or just cheat out something else that just gives absurd amounts of value. Just cheating out a giant creature is absurd on turn four. And you can very easily do that. Even on a very small budget, you can just cheat out a creature on turn four pretty easily with this kind of a commander because there's like a lot of things that can be creature fodder. There's like a lot of repeatable creature fodder like recently skeleton too. That kind of stuff. And ways to benefit from sacrificing creatures. Maybe even make more creatures from sacrificing those creatures. Yeah, this is just a pretty crazy commander and I do think it is up there with geared essentially just on a powerhouse commander compared to the others in the set. I guess I should have mentioned earlier too that like these are all commanders this S tier, this S tier, these tiers are all in comparison to each other. This is within a vacuum of uh, Owls of Thunder Junction. That means that, like, hey, these commanders, one might be an S tier in this set, one might not be an S tier compared to other commanders from other sets, okay? So, like, it's just with all within the same set, this is an S tier in my opinion. Next up, Baron Bertram Greywater, a 3-4 Vampire Noble for 4 mana in Orzhov. Whenever one or more tokens end in battle under control, create a 1-1 one, one Black Vampire Rogue creature token with lifelink. Triggers only once each turn. Yeah, triggers only once each turn. I guess that is needed, right? It was pointed to me because <laughs> I messed that up on the episode. But yeah, that would just be infinite. If it wasn't, sure, fine. You could have said like, they could have said like, um, uh, let's see, whatever one or more non-vampire tokens. There you go. That's what it should have been. And then you could just let it, you know, happen more than once each turn. Okay. Anyways, uh, yeah, because it's one or more and it's like once each turn, you're limited to just like one extra creature each turn. It is with each trip on the table. You could get four potentially. You can also sacrifice them, creatures, sorry, uh, creature artifacts for one in a black draw card. Eh, it's just kind of a meh commander. It's not the worst. It's definitely nowhere near the best. It's not even middle of the road. It's going to be a C tier commander for me. Next up, Bruce Tarl, Roving Rancher, a 4-3 human warrior for four mana in Boros. Oxen, you control double strike. <laughs> Oxen, fun. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, exit the top card of your library, it's a land. You may get 2-2 two, two Oxen. Otherwise, you may cast another next turn. This is one that 
It's only real limiting factor, I mean, compared to, like, other tribes. If this was like, hey, elves! I mean, in, in Boros might be weird, but, like, elves or goblins or whatnot, it'd be a lot more powerful, but oxen have, like, no support. Like, go look up, like, any amounts of oxen, and they're all pretty terrible. And, uh, yeah, no support. This one can generate its own oxen, obviously, but, like, slowly. And just Malfit or text, there's ways to use and abuse that, yes. But, I mean, I think just because it is limited to the oxen factor... Yeah, this is not nowhere nowhere near the worst. It's not D tier, but it is like a C, just a very solid C commander. Next up. Okay. Ariat the Beguiler. This one's a problematic commander in my opinion, because some play, people are going to build this and not realize it's going to be pretty salty, and then people are going to get salty about it, and they're going to be like, Why are you mad? Why are you mad? It's a salt-inducing commander. Human Warlock with lifelink for four mana and Esper. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non land permanent opponent controls with mana value less than or equal to that aura's mana value, gain control of that permanent for as long as aura is remained attached to it. That aura is attached to it. Nowhere on this card does it say, like, if Ariat leaves the battlefield, the people gain control of back to their, gain control of their auras again, or not auras, but gain control of their permanents again. No. It's just, like, every single one of your auras becomes control magic, essentially. Like, hey, oh yeah, I'm just... Whatever this aura does, doesn't really matter. Just, up, oh, put that on that. It's mine now. Put that on that. It's mine now. I must have some enchantress type effects in place, so I draw a bunch of cards whenever I'm doing these things, too. Steal all your best things. Luckily, it is limited to non-land, or otherwise you'd be like, one of those cards are like, hey, that's an island now. Those kind of, like, enchantment cards, the, like, auras that are like, that's an island. Like, oh, I steal it now. No. Luckily, that's not part of it. It's a salt-inducing commander. It's very, very, very powerful. Not quite S-tier, in my opinion, but uh, very, very solid A-tier commander. And again, very salt-inducing. I will remind you, please, with these kinds of commanders, ask your playgroup first if they're okay with it before building around it because you don't want to be upset when the playgroup's like, yeah, I don't want to play that against that anymore. And you're like, but why? It's a commander. It's legal. I should be able to play with it. Well, yes, but uh, in the right context. You know, ask the right playgroup or the right people at the LGS. So play with it. They'll play with it. But only certain people will play with it. Next up, Eartha Joe Frontier Mentor, a 2-4 core advisor for 4 mana in Boros. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token with tap. Target creature control gets plus plus zero to turn. Activate as a sorcery. On top of that, whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature player, copy that ability. Choose targets for the copy. Uh, okay. Other than, I mean, just Eddie and I had a wish for this year. We did an episode on, like, wishes for 2024 really quick. And one of them was, like, no more just doubling or tripling effects. And Wizards is like, doubling, tripling effects. Ha, 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 ha. Players love it. Boring. Um, yeah, I mean... Doubling up copying is good. It's limited to just Boros, which is probably, again, the weakest color combination, I would say, typically. Uh, ETB is okay. Yeah, overall, probably a... Yeah, let's go C-tier commander. I mean, maybe it's a B... I'm just probably being a bit... I'm probably being a bit harsh, just because, like, I think that it's kind of boring that they just keep making the doubling and tripping. Like, we're being clever. No, you're not. Um, yeah, I'm just going to say it's probably a B-tier, because there are enough effects out there that, again... Are abilities that do target that can be copied that can be very very powerful so being able to just double those up can be very good next up gem lightfoot sky explorer get ready for a very exciting commander three three human scout for four mana azorius flying vigilance okay i lied begin of your end step if you haven't cast spell from your hand this turn draw a card um yeah you're a d tier commander <laughs> i mean i don't think there's any there's i don't think there's any way around it like Please, please illustrate to me in the comments below how this is not a D-tier commander. Like, this is like, hey. I mean, I guess it's like, okay, you get a card draw engine technically. Technically. If you're like, all right, I'm playing completely on my opponent's turns. I get one extra card a turn. But it's on a creature that doesn't have any kind of protection on it. It's just a 3-3 flying vigilant commander. And I really, if I needed to, could cast a spell on my turn that's detrimental to me because I don't get my card advantage from the commander. And that's all this is worth. So you're like, oh, well, I could play my mana rock. Oh, but, but I need that card. Okay. I'm not going to play my mana rock. You're going to make a lot of bad decisions to try to draw those cards. Next up, one that is better. Crawl and Violent Cacophony, a 2-3 zombie that costs 4 mana and is it flying? Whenever you catch a second spell each turn, put a counter. I, I shorthand counter, sorry. Plus one counter on Crawl and Violent Cacophony, draw a card. Again, they basically made like two Jorian different commanders from this set for some reason. I don't know why, but they did. They're like, Jorian this, Jorian that. The 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 the, yeah, the bird dude. You know what I mean. Uh, Malcolm. There we go. <laughs> so this one essentially again is like... Two mana more than that, yes. But instead of it being, again, investigating, making clues, you are getting that card advantage, which is great. And also, growing this does take some time, obviously, to get this to be actually in kind of a threat. 
It can get through with the flying, which is nice. And yeah, I mean, that card advantage is nice. You have to commit a good amount of resources to it. Um, overall, uh, I mean, a lot more potential for card draw than <laughs> what we just talked about the last one. This is like a C plus B minus. I think I'm going to go. I mean, it's like basically like Jorian. Like, where's Jorian? I'm going to go with the C. I'm going to go with the C. It's a C plus, basically. Okay. Yeah. A good amount. You have to dedicate a lot of resources, draw some cards, but like, it's decent. Next up, Obeka, Splitter of Seconds. I wish I looked more into, like, which are the best upkeep triggers to, like, really abuse with this, but it's a pretty cool commander. And I misread that in the spoilers, actually. My apologies. 2-5 Ogre Warlock like, with Menace for 4 mana in Grixis. Whenever he deals combination to a player, you get that many additional upkeep stuff on this face. <laughs> okay, I messed up in that I thought it was just, like, when it hits once, all right, that's, like, okay, that many. Like, cool, you hit once. And so, like, if you, like, double strike it, you know, you're like, okay, I hit twice, and so I get two. I believe, and correct me below in the comments if I'm wrong again on this, but, like, that is based on how much damage you dealt with Obeka. So, like, if you hit just regularly, that's two damage. Again, deals counters player, you get that many. So, that's two. I think that's... Is that how that works? Which is it's, like, equal to damage. I don't know. It's either that, or it's still powerful either way, right? And you're still going to want double strike effects. You're still going to want extra combat type effects. Getting, like, upkeep triggers just as a whole, though, like, just getting an absurd amount with this is crazy good. There's a, a lot of very effective just, like, enchantments or creatures or artifacts. But, like, hey, when the upkeep happens, you get this. When the upkeep happens, you get that. And they're limited because it's, like, just on your upkeep, you're getting that effect. And it's like, no, 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 no. I get the upkeep plus, like, an absurd amount of extra upkeep. So... That's a very good commander. Again, it does have some evasion. A little bit, you're probably going to want to give it a little more evasion than just Menace, but still, if like, you just give it flying, it's going to be able to get through on players, too. Very, very, very good. Uh, I'm going to go with an A tier commander. Not quite up to that S tier, though. Not quite geared or a cool. Uh, moving on, Selvala, Eager Trailblazer, a 4-5 Elf Scout with Vigilance that costs 4 mana in Selesnia. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you get a 1-1 Mercenary that, again, has that tap effect for plus 1-0. Zero. Active of the Sorcery, I've complained about this many times. Wizards, why? Combat tricks are scary for players. Okay. Well, anyways. Uh, tap, choose a color. Add one mana of that color for each different power among creatures you control. So, obviously, that plays into that first part where it's like, okay, adjust those powers so that I can then tap this for a ton. Uh, I mean, this is one of those commanders that players might not realize might get a little annoying because the best way to build around this is probably, well, infinite untapping, which there are a couple ways to do that, like Staff of Domination kind of thing. Staff of whatever that one is. There's a couple ways to do that, so are the parents. Um, but also just like, oh, okay, cool. Tap for a giant amount. Uh, cast Vitalize. Untap all my creatures. Cool. Tap this for even more mana. All right. Um, yeah, all right. I'm going to uh, cast this um, this giant draw spell. Shamanic Revelation. Okay, cool. I'll draw a bunch of cards. Oh, look, another untap spell. I'll test that again. Untap it again. Okay, here we go. Be careful when you're building around this. I've learned that, um, unfortunately... Or maybe fortunately, just is what it is. When I built my artifact storm deck, some players don't like storm. Many players out there don't like storm. Again, this kind of commander, if you're going to build in that way, ask first, please. Not every builds around this commander need to be asked, in my opinion. But just like those specifically that are like storming and casting a lot of spells in one turn and like solitary for a turn for like 20 minutes, you need to ask before you're doing that to a table. Uh, very powerful. Once built around correctly, once uh, you get things set up, I'm going to throw that in the A tier. And again, those people out there right now are like, this is not A compared to that. There should be, those should be the S. Uh, just my S tier is a bit strange right now. I'm sure, yes, compared to most. But I do think those two are just at the top. Next up, Gisa the Hellraiser. A 4-4 Human Warlock. Ward 2, pay 2 life. 5 mana in total. Skeleton, zombies, you totally plus almost 1 a menace. Whenever you commit a crime, you make 2-2-2 two, 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 tapped. 2-tapped. Uh, 2-2. Two, two. There we go. Black and blue and black. I don't know why I'm sticking in reverse right now. Zombie, rogue, creature tokens. Ability triggers only once you turn. The limiting factor there really stalls this out a little bit. I mean, it's still a very good commander, right? If you commit a crime, you get six soul power that has menace across two bodies, as long as this commander is in play. That being said, it is limited again to just once each turn, so yeah, you can't do some shenanigans with it, really. Um, it's good. It's very good. I'd say that it's definitely like, it's definitely like A minus, B plus, in my opinion. Like, with each row of the table, you can get, I mean, six power on your turn. I guess technically you could get what, like, What's six times four? 24 power? <laughs> That's quite a bit. Uh, you get a lot of power with each trip around the table, essentially. Um, yeah, and there's also some pretty powerful, well, skeletons, sure, but like zombies more so, right? Zombie tribal. You are in the right color for zombie tribal. And there's some good things in blue, too, but like you're in the right color for zombie tribal. So I will throw this one up. Sorry, brother Giralf. 
but uh, Gisa is above you. Let's throw you up in the A tier. Next up, Rakdos the Muscle. 6-5 Demon Mercenary for 5 mana in Rakdos. It's always funny. It's like Rakdos in Rakdos. Yes. Flample. I wonder if Rakdos will ever be outside of Rakdos colors. Probably not. Probably won't. It won't even get like Grixis. No, just like Rakdos is always Rakdos. Just doesn't doesn't dabble. Maybe like Rakdos plus like a colorless. Turns into Eldrazi. Cool. Whatever. Uh, whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile cards equal to its mana value from the top of target player's library until your next end step. You must play those cards and uh, mana of any type. You may spend a castle spell. Sacrifice a creature. Rakdos gains indestructible turn. Tap it. Active only once each turn. The last part's very limiting in that, like, this can't be just, like, your repeatable free sacrifice outlet where you're just getting a ton a, of triggers, essentially. But also, I mean, it is limited to your next end step. Not, like, at the end of your next turn. That would be better. Next end step is, again, like, if you're doing this on your turn, you're only getting to cast those spells then and there. Your sacrifice on your opponent's turn is great. Uh, but also, again, if, like, two people try to take this out, it's taken out. Because you're like, okay, I sacrifice a creature. I give it an indestructible. Ha, ha, ha. And then someone else is like, okay, uh, their Swords of Plowshares failed. I'll cast my Swords of Plowshares. And then you're like, oh, okay. I mean, they have to dedicate twice as many resources to it. Like, two resources. You need, like, people, like, working together around that, maybe. Or that same person needs two resources to take it out. That being said, yeah, since this isn't a repeatable sacrifice outlet, that does limit it quite a bit. Again, this one's, like, B plus, A minus. It's good. Like, getting a lot of value out of your creatures, like sacrificing creatures. And also, like, you can utilize, like, threat and effects to be like, I steal your best creature. I sacrifice it. I get that. And other kind of risk cut style value. Like, I mean, the, the funny build around this is, like, trying to mill people out with Rakdos, which is hilarious. Um, but uh, that's not probably the best build around this. Gosh, I just really wish, again, this, I wish I had one more tier, essentially. And maybe I should have just, you know, not had the two at this. But uh, but that's that's just that is what it is. Uh, yeah, you're like B plus. You're like a B plus. You're a B plus. Okay, there you are. Roxanne Starfall Savant, a four three cat druid for five mana. Enters the battlefield or attacks great tap colors. Artifact token name meteorite. With when meteorite enters the battlefield, it will any target and tap at one mana of any color. Whenever you tap an artifact token that is not a treasure. Oh, sorry, I wish it said that, but it doesn't. For mana, add one mana of any type that artifact token produced. Um, yeah, this is just hey, your artifacts are extra. Woo. I mean, it's very powerful. The problem is that many players out there, myself included, are a bit tired of treasures. I'm just being really good. Uh, yeah, doubling up your treasure mana is absurd. Uh, doubling up, obviously, those meteorites is nice, too. Uh, there are ways to use and abuse, essentially, this ETB in these colors. Like, you have, like, some... I mean, you don't have blink effects, really, except for, like, Conjure's Closet, obviously, those kinds. But, like, you have ways to create token copies of this commander. And even if you are having to sacrifice that token copy because the legend rule, it doesn't matter. You are still getting that ETB. You also have ways to use abuse the attack trigger. Again, extra combats too. To get more and more of those meteorites in play, which is nice because you get that damage. But also, like a Panharmonicon can double up that trigger when it comes to the ETB. Or like Wolfgar doubles up the attack trigger too. Uh, and then also you can utilize things like Parallel Lives to get twice as many tokens. And that's twice as much damage. You also have damage doublers. You also have damage triplers to be on fire. You also have extra things that can also give you more mana from your resources too. Like Nyx Bloom Ancient. Um, yeah, you've got a lot of resources to make this very powerful. And again, Treasure is already just inherently very powerful. So you have all those kind of synergies that work well with that. Yeah, I mean, this is a very good commander. It is not quite up to S tier, but I do think it is worthy of the A tier. Which is becoming a little packed as well now, too. Moving on. A tier. The Gitrog Ravenous Ride. A 6-5 frog that is trampling and hasty. That costs 5 mana in Golgari. Whenever it deals counter to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that's saddled at this turn. If you do draw X cards, put X land cards in your hand on the battlefield. Tap X to sacrifice creature's power. This is one where it's like you literally just need to get through once. And when you do, with the right creature in play that has saddled it, you just need to get through once. And you're at such a commanding position that it's going to be really hard for your opponents to ever catch up to you. You get one giant creature out, and then you're like, oh, okay, cool. I sacrificed that creature. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I hit the opponent. Uh, I get to draw, I mean, again, like wall of blood type effect, right? Because, again, it is based off power, right? It is based off power. Wall of blood type effect. Okay, I paid 20 life. Cool. Uh, I drew 20 cards and then got 15 lands in a play or whatnot. Yeah, the thing is, it's not just even the card draw that's the problem. It's that you're getting so far ahead on lands. It's absurd. 
So yeah, again, like you kind of you just need to get through once. You need to get a little bit of setup right. You have to get that big creature in play, which again can be as easy as like a wall of blood and being like being able to cut, okay to play pay mana, which you're, you're mana pay life, which you're gonna be fine with, yes. Or like a beast of burden, which counts other people's creatures, or like the ones that count like number of creatures in graveyards, or ones that like again like have a giant downside, like that one that's in Golgari that's like costs four mana in total, and it's like an eleven ten, but like you attack or block with it, and then you have to sacrifice creature, but you're not gonna be doing that because you're just gonna be saddling with it. Which again, it's hilarious. All these like giant creatures being like, and get rugs big, but like these giant creatures that are like bigger than forests and bigger than trees, being like, I'm riding this little frog, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, getting sacrificed. Um, yeah, if you hit once, you're way ahead of everyone else. If you don't, you're you're swinging with a six five that is going into danger probably. And then uh, yeah, you're saddling with big creatures that aren't actually doing anything for you. So there you go. Uh, I'm gonna go with an A tier. Very, very good and equipped S tier. But again, like it can obviously get way ahead of opponents very quickly in the right situation. Next up, Andy Flash the Veteran. 4 5 Flash, Human Rogue, 4 6 mana in Naya. Enters the battlefield if you cast your turn target, perfect card, mana value 3 less. When you grab the battlefield, tapped. Uh, whatever comes tapped, exile type of card, your library. You may play those this turn. Uh, I mean, the limiting factors on this are mana value at 6. That's quite high for what this does. The second thing that's limiting on it, again, it's like. Sun Titan, but worse, because again, it does have that cast trigger requirement. So like, hey, I enter the battlefield, if you cast it. If you didn't have that, you could very easily use and abuse this with ETB effects, ETB effects with blink effects. There's probably some infinite combos you can utilize with it too. That being said, yeah, I mean, that's nice for that first effect. That's not really what you're gonna build around though. You're gonna build around like tapping this, but again, compared to the other slicing we talked about earlier, this one just, I think Wiley, whatever the name is, uh, this one just like, yeah, you get to impulse draw too. But again, it costs six mana to get this thing out. So, and you can flash it out, sure. But like, yeah, it's kind of like similar build path around that. You get one extra color. It's probably not going to make up for that difference, though. Again, it being six mana is a really big kind of limiting factor to this one. So let's throw that in the C tier. Next up, Bonnie Paul, clear cutter. Basically, Paul Bunyan. Six, five, giant scout with reach that costs six mana in Simic. When it enters the battlefield, create bow, a legendary ox creature token with this creature's power dose. You're equal to the number of lands you control. Uh, so basically, like Paul Bunyan and uh, Babe, the Blue Ox, right? There you go. Very cool. Uh, that being said, uh, whenever you attack, do the Simic thing. Boring, wizards. I guess I'm not really here to, like, rate, you know, if it's boring or not. But whenever you attack, draw a card, then put a land card from your hand on the battlefield or hand or graveyard on the battlefield. They give it. There you go. They gave it the graveyard. It's different, right, wizards? Boring. Uh, I mean, yeah, does Simic things. So, I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, you get to make a big ox that can hit people. Great. Good for you. Uh, the downside is, uh, it's only once per turn on attack, I guess. Just on attack. Do that once. Sure, that's still a, a lot of value to be had. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you make a big threat. You also get to draw in, in ramp. For your graveyard, too. So, that's nice. Uh, I mean, it's probably like a B minus, C plus, in my opinion. Let's throw in the B tier. Okay. It is six mana, though. Hmm. Can I really knock this down? I'm trying to find ways to knock this down to see just because I think it's a boring design, but I think that's kind of unfair because that's not what this experiment is for. This uh, this uh, is actually not for it's not an experiment really, but it's not what this is for. Last commander, and I might move you down, Bonnie Paul. Calamity, Galloping Inferno. We've got a horse mount, a 4-6 with haste that costs 6 mana in red. Whenever it attacks while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that's saddled at this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice the token at the beginning of the next end step. Repeat this process once, saddle one. Basically, uh, hey, uh, have creatures that have ETBs most likely or LTBs and use and abuse those uh, by making token copies of them with this. The limiting factor on this, again, is basically that it just costs a good amount and that it is in mono red. So compared to the other ones in the set, I'm going to throw you in the C tier. Can I throw Bonnie Paul in C? Can I throw in C? Yeah. We're going to do that. We're going to throw Bonnie Paul in C. I feel better now. <laughs> okay. Whether that's right or wrong, I mean, I'm throwing it in C. Um, yeah, I think overall, I think I do feel pretty good about this. I do think I feel pretty good about the overall rankings of these. I do personally think that there is just an S tier of Geared and a cool that is just above the rest. I do think it is above the rest. And I don't think that anything else quite gets there. There's other ones that get close. They definitely get close, but like not quite to the S tier in my opinion. And again, that kind of makes the A tier a bit like the A plus is definitely different than the A minus in this tier. That being said, yeah, it's not that big of a gap. And, and I think I think I feel pretty good about that. There's a ton of... That's the other thing about this list is that there's a ton of commanders in the set. Typically, these days, we're getting like... Hopefully, again, we get back to that point. We're like 25 or so in a set, and like that's it. Right now, we have 43 to talk about from just this set. Again, not including the pre-cons, not including, uh, again, like whatever the 
the vault stuff is if there's any from that too but yeah there's a lot of commanders to talk about in this one there's a lot to compare and contrast to so i do think i feel pretty good about this and yeah just the s tier just being two kind of makes the others a bit more i guess d is pretty is pretty uh light too though obviously because there's only so many bad terrible commanders that are just kind of really really bad but yeah I'd love to hear from you, so let me in the comments what your thoughts are on all these. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear from you, and let me know what you think about all these. How wrong am I in some of these? How right am I in some of these? What's your favorite commander from the set? Make sure you're staying tuned, especially uh, speaking of uh, favorite commanders. Stay tuned to this channel for my Golden Pig Golden Toilet Awards coming up at some point. Uh, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And, of course, as always, thanks again, Ed. Have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support.